Hello, Bio 4, and welcome to chapter 20 on the heart. Very fascinating chapter. First, let me look at this. Have you look at this picture? What's going on here on the arrow? I'm not going to let on, but look at this. And then here, there's something funny. I'm not going to let on. We'll talk about that later. Here we go. So the first thing we need to think about in the heart is where is it? So its position. It's located within the mediastinum. You need to know that word. So the mediastinum really is a space. It's an area. It's an area that is going to fit the heart inside of, like a little cave. That's the mediastinum. We say that as far as the location of the heart, the base is at the level of the second rib and the apex is at the fifth rib. So those two words sometimes are confusing, base and apex. So if you look at the heart, the base is the broader end of it. So it's up at the top, which is kind of weird. That's base. And then apex is less broad if you think of the tip. So if we go back to, here we go, second rib and fifth rib. Base and apex of the heart. And there is just one more picture of the mediastinum. I put an M there for you. Um, <clears throat> I'll go back to my pen and um, didn't write it all out because it's so hard to write with this pen. But that would be that space <clears throat> that the heart, that little cavity there is the mediastinum. <clears throat> okay, the next set of vocabulary is somewhat confusing. So I'm going to give you these names and then show you pictures. I tried to draw one for you. These are the coverings of the heart. So if you had the heart itself, it's the myocardium. Muscle. Myo is muscle. So in red here is the muscle. And then notice how many layers there are on the outside. So there's one pink layer here very closely attached onto the surface of that muscle. So given that it's on the surface of the muscle, very attached, it's visceral. Okay, anything visceral is on the organ itself. So it's called the visceral pericardium. Cardium is heart, peri is round. So it is that membrane that surrounds the muscle of the heart, the visceral pericardium. Okay, now that actual membrane, look what it does. It sort of curves around and comes back around it like this. So it's going to form a second layer. And that second <clears throat> layer is called the, the parietal pericardium surrounding the heart again. Okay, attached visceral outer parietal pericardium. And that leaves this blue space in the middle. And that is the pericardial cavity, and it's got fluid in it. Pericardial fluid. Okay, one other complication here is that two different words, synonyms, are used for the visceral pericardium. The visceral pericardium is also referred to as the epicardium, just to be a little confusing. So I've written it out for you. If it's visceral, it's attached onto the muscle, and it's also called epi. If it's parietal, it's the outer layer. Write that, it's the outer layer. And then the pericardial sac that also contains fluid is what is caught in between. And you may have heard the term pericarditis, and that's the inflammation of the pericardium. Okay, all right. So I drew this again for you to be sure that you had muscle, and then in black, something very attached onto the muscle is visceral pericardium. As it curves around, it's going to form a second layer that's the parietal pericardium. And what's in between is the pericardial space. Okay, let's go to the chambers. So <clears throat> there are two atria and two ventricles. So we have four chambers in the human heart. In the atria, we think of it as the entryways, and there are these thin-walled upper chambers, 
and the ventricles. The term for that means hollow spaces. And that's going to be thick and muscular, and that's what's going to actually eject the blood out to circulate it through the body. So entryways, atria, ejection pumps are the ventricles for chambers. This is the anterior view of the heart, and you can see muscle, you can see little arteries, veins, and then these major vessels, and we're going to have to name those major vessels. I'm going to show you the posterior view first, and then I'll come back to that. Posterior view, lots of major vessels there for you to see. Okay, let me backtrack. So. Of those great vessels, you will have to know the superior and the inferior vena cava, the pulmonary trunk, which is an artery, we call it a trunk, because it's going to do this and turn into a right and a left pulmonary artery. This part here is going to be the trunk, okay, like a tree, that's the trunk. And then pulmonary veins and aorta, but we will look at all of these with diagrams. So here I have superior vena cava and inferior vena cava, which is feeding venous blood from the lower body coming up into this chamber. And the superior vena cava is receiving blood from the upper body is coming in. Um, also visible here is the aorta and visible here is the pulmonary trunk. So the pulmonary trunk is this part here but then it's going to branch right into pulmonary artery on the left and this piece here already here is going to be pulmonary artery that's coming over to the right. Okay, if I show you the posterior view, you're going to see superior vena cava again. And this is a better view of the inferior as it's bringing blood in from the lower body. And they're feeding into exactly the same place. Okay, you also see the aorta. <clears throat> and you see the left pulmonary artery, right pulmonary artery, right and left, and you don't see the trunk because you'd see that on the anterior view. And these are pulmonary veins, but not until I uh, show you the whole circulation will that make sense, so we'll come back to that. Uh, another piece of information you need to know is what is the coronary sinus, and these are a group of veins that are going to collect blood from the heart itself, from the actual muscle, and they collect the venous blood and then they will put it into a sinus that will then reach the right atrium and blood needs to be circulated. We think of blood circulating through the body, but we forget that the blood from the heart itself also needs to be circulated and go from venous to arterial to load it up with oxygen. Let's stop here, and we'll continue on by looking at the heart wall in the next video. Thanks for joining.